Welcome in Helium Chipstar Console Quick Tour. When you arrive on uh, the login page, uh, you can sign in if you already have an account, but if it's the first time you join the console, uh, you have to sign up. For going to sign up into the Helium Chipstar Console, uh, you need to set an email that will be used as your login and set a password. Then uh, you have to enter a tenant name. The notion of tenant in Chipstalk is equivalent to the notion of organization you had previously in Helium Legacy Console. You can use whatever name you want. The coupon code is an optional uh, field. You only enter something here if you get one. It's uh, to get some specific configuration into your environment and specific program that are going on. Then you need to take a look on the term and use. This will conduct you to a page containing the information about the SLA and the pricing which is applying to uh, your environment. So you need to accept the term and use to register and once all of this has been uh, filled, you can go to register. This action will conduct to an email sent to you and in this email you will find a link to click to validate your registration. If you don't get this email, please take a look to your spam box and if you don't see it into your spam, spam box, you can contact us. It happens sometime and for contacting us, you can go to Discord or you can go to helium-iot.eu with a contact form. This link works for helium-iot uh, solutions. Uh, if you are registering in another service provider where you have the same interface, please contact this service provider. So once you get and validate this email, you can now log in to the Helium T Start Console. So set your login and password and submit and you will arrive into the Chipstark Helium environment. The Chipstark part of this environment is a standard Chipstark, no modification. So all the documentation you can find related to Chipstark is applicable to Helium environment. What is different is this a header you have where you have a certain number of options. You can get some information about what is invoice and what are the uh, condition uh, for uh, your organization. Like here you see what uh, is the setup of this organization, so related to the cost and what is your consumption. You can also select the number of replicates uh, you want to receive which is basically corresponding to max buy parameter you add in Helium legacy environment. The setup is for the whole tenant and it's a reason for being uh, able to create new tenants to support multiple configuration. What else we have uh, a different compared to Chipstalk is your DC counter. Uh, you see here that evolving based on uh, the data credit that consumed by the communication and you have this menu. This menu helps to access all the actions uh, you may do inside uh, this console. You can purchase data credits. You can in this uh, menu entry access to your invoice. And I let you know that the first time you're gonna click and purchase data credit, you're gonna automatically arrive to my profile because for the invoicing, we need your personal information. So please update your profile. And once it's done, you can go to purchase data credit. You can transfer DCs between tenants uh, you own. And if you uh, purchase data credit, you will see your invoice appearing here. In this menu, uh, you can also create new tenants. You have a limitation about the number of tenants you can create. If you need more tenants, you can contact me to uh, increase these limits. For any support or any contact, you can go to service request and in service request, you can create a request that will be sent and answered. 
a service request may have a topic so please be clear on this topic and details detail as much as possible uh, what is your problem to see how I can help you you will get the response in the same place normally uh, an indicator is here uh, let you know when a response has arrived but you can check also on the same menu you have access to the documentation so this documentation is related to what is a bit specific in helium compared to uh, chipstack standard uh, ecosystem for the chipstack documentation please refer to chipstack uh, website you can have the access to the hpid documentation so the chipstack console can be controlled through hpi for adding devices deleting devices uh, for uh, sending uh, downlink requests, this kind of thing. Uh, this is documented and uh, you can access it. It's a REST API that is exposed uh, to, uh, to, to internet. The other important point is the ability to migrate a fleet from Helium legacy console to uh, the Chipstark uh, environment. It's a wizard. And to access this wizard, you need to create an IPI key in the legacy console, select your legacy console and follow the wizard. I will go in detail uh, of this in a different video uh, to simplify uh, your visit here. You can at the end sign out uh, if you need to uh, leave and disconnect. Now let's have a look on the Park Park you can uh, access here. It will be a really, really quick tour uh, what is important is here, if you have multiple tenants, you select the tenant uh, you want to work on. And there is a big difference between Chipstark and Helium Legacy. This big difference is Helium Legacy is more a flat organization. You have device, you have integration, you have decoder. They are all at the same level and uh, you link them with this uh, magic uh, flowchart we had in the Helium Legacy console. This does not exist in Chipstark, and in Chipstark, the things are organized hierarchically. So it means that in a tenant, you have applications. Applications are a group of devices, and applications manage the integration. So you pilot your integration at the app level. App is a group of devices, so in your app, you see your devices, and the devices can be accessed and it have really interesting metrics you can see here and you also have device metrics which are you to uh, have some graphs of the data value that you receive after being decoded this platform is not made for making dashboard and end user dashboard so device metric is something you can use it's a uh, really user friendly for yourself but don't build a solution based on this. We can decide tomorrow to destroy all the device metric that are stored in those database and you can lose all of this. So it's not the place where you store information. A device need a configuration, but we don't want to configure every device uh, the same way. So basically a device is associated to a device type, what goes a device profile. Device profile are defined in the menu and a device profile is always associated to a region. Chipstark is not a global uh, LNS as Helium was uh, in the legacy console. So it means that if you have devices in different region, you need to create different device profile for this. and Normally on Chipstark, a device cannot move from one region to the other. The Helium Chipstark console is managing this migration of device from one region to another region automatically in a condition you have device profile with the same name and different region. For this, device need to rejoin. Um, a device profile contain a region. It also indicates the way the device is joining the network. It can be OTAA, which was the only existing standard in the Helium Legacy console. And now it supports ABP, so you can use that uh, solution. 
It supports also class B and class C devices. And the device profile is where you're gonna define your codec. So codec uh, is how you decode. So it's basically decoder. And you have a function which is really quite similar to what you had on a Helium uh, Legacy. So you can basically not copy and pass directly, but uh, easily port uh, your decoder to the codec environment. So the codec will uh, create some metrics and these metrics uh, will be accessible as measurements and later will be visible in the device metrics. So what you have in your decoder will appear at this, uh, at this place. A tenant have a dashboard to have a global view of uh, what happened in your fleets. It have multiple users if needed. So if you need to invite someone into your tenant, uh, you can add a tenant user. The user need to exist into Chipstack, so you need to have registered previously. But after that, you can add it to your tenant and you can see it. If you want to interact programmatically programmatively uh, with a chip stock, you can create an API key. The API key is applicable to that uh, tenant and you can use it uh, on the API that are uh, documented in the API documentation you can access here. Now you have made a tour of Helium chip stock environment. You can watch the other video going more on detail on different actions.